Namaste and welcome uh, to Krishna Kavita Krishnaji and uh, she is a contributing uh, author for Shared Roots, uh, Indica's latest offering, uh, Tales from the Indosphere on India's Connect to Cambodia. It was very refreshing to uh, read your uh, travelogue of sorts, uh, Kavita ji, because the others, others were stories, both uh, fictional and magical. But uh, I think 90% of India's engagement with Cambodia is touristy and uh, travel related, at least in modern times. Yes. So uh, it's an eye opener on how India should, uh, you know, discover uh, Cambodia. So how was it for you to go, especially with your mom, to uh, different generations? And was there a difference in perspective? That's a very, very interesting question. I didn't look at it that way when we started off because Amma and I had seen this uh, National Geographic and I mentioned in the travelogue, the top shot, which those days was a top shot. Now it's probably a drone shot. Uh, hmm. And that particular edition, we were so mesmerized and it stuck with in us and always wanted to uh, go to Cambodia, to Angkor Wat especially because Amma and I do Yatra a lot. We go to different hmm. temples. We do temple runs, you probably know. And this was so exciting that, you know, we could go there. And uh, it is a temple, even though it's called ruins or uh, whatever, it's still a living temple in a sense that uh, the Apsara, the management authority there, uh, unlike, uh, I would say, the ASI maybe here, because here, uh, if it is ASI run, we can't really do puja in the temples. Over mm -hmm. there, as you've seen again in the travelogue you've read, uh, the gods are very uh, okay with people worshipping. And mm -hmm. so it's a living temple in a sense, despite the ruins. So the perspective, the difference in perspective was, um, uh, fortunately or unfortunately for Amma, uh, it was like, she kept walking 12 to 13 hours every day. And that's why if you've seen, uh, we were getting massages, Khmer massages <laughs> almost, uh, every second day. Uh, for her, it was like, I don't know, I don't know if I'm going to come back mm. here. Mm. So that uh, the, the pressure of like, now I'm here, let me... Absorb absorb and see how much ever I can. So anything I was suggesting, Priya Vihir is so far and Valshpin is far and anything I was suggesting, she said, yes, tapakunda, we should go, we should go. Mm -hmm. And for me, it was like, okay, if I don't do it this time, I'll all, you know, even though I, I don't know, I may or may not go because it involves time, resources, so many things. Uh, Bhagwan's Ichha also. Uh, but uh, there's this hope that yes, I could. So that was there. So that intensity with which she absorbed everything and did everything was and the passion was just amazing i mean for me mm. to see her walk so much i would get tired but she would mm. say no i'll climb i'll do i you know so mm. it was very very encouraging for me very inspiring uh to see yeah. that and i have her as a role model so <laughs> oh, lovely. you come from a very uh spiritual tradition uh with swami dayan and saraswati ji so i'm sure the roots um uh, I don't know, in my uh, field of work, uh, the work and um, my experience of spirituality are very intrinsically connected. So I don't know if it's the same with you. Uh, when you go, it's not just a yatra. It's not just uh, your personal um, journey, but it's also your professional journey. So and does it work like that? Yes, personal, professional, as well as it's... Um, it's just a fulfillment. Uh, so it, it is, the time has brought everything together and it's just a flowering of, you know, the paripakvata of whatever has come in that moment together. So even though it was an individual, like the, the aham led journey that I want to see Kabal Shpeen, because that was what enticed me. I saw this on Twitter in 16 or 17, uh, this stream with so many Shivalingas mm -hmm. under, under water. Mm -hmm. And that was what, I, Angkor Wat, I remember the top shot, but this is what decided that I have to go. So there was this the karma of wanting to go for a yatra. And the fact that me and my mother, uh, Amma and I do a summer uh, trip uh, every year in the in the summer. Uh, and then she also wanted to go and she we both do together, uh, you know, various yatras. So this is kind of a yatra, yes. Uh, at the same time, um, I have a kind of a reporter bent of mind or a maybe a journalist or a, you could even say a researcher bent of mine. Mm -hmm. um, I like to know more of everything. And with Vedanta, like you said, with uh, Pooja Swamiji's, uh, you know, blessings and grace. So it is that you want to probe to the truth of everything. 
So Vedanta is of course a paramarthika. You probe into that the reality, but in Vyavahara also we are not after such a spiritual training. One is not uh, just happy with fluff or uh, mm. superficial. Uh, you know, you've seen something on Twitter and bhool gaye. As any, if you're interested, you have to go all the way. You know, and complete it and whatever you can. So for me, that researcher bent of mind that, and then also preserving it. And mm. and uh, Twitter in those days, uh, definitely uh, from I think fourteen to twenty uh, for sure, just around COVID five six years, was amazing. Mm. There was all the, so much happening in the Indo sphere, Hindu sphere, uh, temple runs, and I would put up so many threads. Everybody would, and we would. So there's a lot of exchange, and it was very different then, at least in my experience, and it taught me a lot mm. uh, from what I learned from Swamiji in the Gurukulam. that was translated in real life for example uh, when we went uh, and, and having known that there is our heritage that has gone through trade and commerce to across the seas to other lands mm-hmm. you go there and you see that a lot of shivalingas a lot of broken shivalingas mm-hmm. and the shraddha which i might not have had before what i call twitter schooling uh, mm-hmm. or of course swami ji's training also is that uh you know just if you've read the travel log which which you did yeah. you know just pouring some water on the shivalinga or or being respectful and and some tourists would ask strange questions i didn't put that i think in the mm-hmm. in the travel log. but they mm-hmm. they have a certain idea of what a shivalinga is and but you know trying to tell them you know what what actually it is and things like that or being mindful of and or noticing that look mm-hmm. at the upstairs authorities and and the security people are okay with people praying mm-hmm. here and comparing it with what we have so wanting the best for our heritage taking it beyond oneself although the 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 trip was goaded and guided by self interest that i want to see it and then take amma that is still still self centered in the family way or my my interest but um, the outcome for sure of every trip i make uh, for me it is not just for myself the outcome has to be either a short story or a travel log or it has to be documented in in photographs so that it is useful for others to go others for others to see or to learn about it and whatever they take from there so it is mm-hmm. not limited just for me and my my trip over there yeah, yeah. you you also have a degree in uh, higher education i think so uh, the, uh, while speaking to the ambassador uh, of cambodia i think several years back she was saying that uh, india offers you know uh, is is a very attractive destination for students from cambodia to come to india and in the cultural space so as part of your work in rihat and all the work that your wonderful work you have done what would you say is where are the spaces that people should when the a visit is reciprocated uh, by cambodians to india where should they study where should they uh, what should they engage with to find the real india they can definitely i mean tamil nadu should be our first pit stop right because mm-hmm. it goes through um, the cholas uh, you would say that uh, uh, the the trade flourished and that's when the the hindu empire over there uh, flourished so tamil Na- tamil nadu would be the first pit stop uh, whether it's studying architecture temple architecture mm-hmm. or uh, shilpa shastras uh, even natya shastra or philosophy hindu studies um because what i have noticed is that even though we talk about the hindu heritage over there uh it is hardly talked about by the the few western authors who have actually written books on angkor wat or cambodia so it is just mentioned in the passing and the word hindu of course doesn't occur at all uh there uh, there are some indians who have done research and i should have got the names ready for you maybe i can text you later mm-hmm. uh because in the world hindu congress in 2018 i did meet an ambassador a uh, 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 an ex ambassador to cambodia indian ambassador to cambodia who uh, who now lives in in the washington dc area and uh, he was uh, there at the conference and uh, he had mentioned some names and some and some researchers who were working on cambodia so i have written the names somewhere and i don't have it handy but that is indians working on uh, cambodia but for cambodians if they come here uh there is so much they can retrace the journey then they can mm-hmm. retrace the paths uh the ships ship building seafaring mm-hmm. you know methods they can study that they can study uh including batik you know this is something mm-hmm. like uh, yeah. so including batik that that went across the seas mm-hmm. 
um, the spice trades, uh, mm. or, you know, textiles, temple mm. building, um, definitely uh, philosophy and spirituality. Um, mm. So medicine, because so much, you know, during trade, so much gets carried. It's not mm. just, uh, you know, material goods. Uh, ideas go and that's how it flourished mm. as, a, as a Hindu kingdom. So they can come, uh, start with Tamil Nadu and make their way up. You know, they can they can start here and make their way up. Definitely go to Odisha because um, I don't think that Batik and Ikat went from there uh, so, uh, to the... So, so Tamil Nadu, Andhra and Odisha in terms of states, um, in terms of uh, study areas, uh, Shilpa Shastras, uh, definitely uh, uh, your architecture and, and uh, temple building and all that. So if one is interested, those could be the areas. Yeah, I think India is also the first country that uh, she was mentioning, which has stepped up and offered services in restoration, setting up a, muse a museum for textiles. So we were the first to offer help when I think in some of the praharas they have ASI has, you know, is doing yes. work. It was so, very exciting to see that. Yeah. Yes. So um, what, Sorry, what, would, uh, yeah, what would, yeah, uh, what would, what would be uh, the route forward the book has come now and if we were to actually bring back hinduism in some uh, way uh, Kavita, to the narrative about indo-cambodian relations how do we uh, do it when in a principally or uh, predominantly uh, buddhist country would they yes. accept it uh, not just buddhist country what was also unfortunate was uh, the narrative that has been set uh, two-pronged narrative. One is, of course, there's a lot of Chinese influence mm -hmm. and inroads. Uh, the Our tuk-tuk driver, uh, he took us to his house and I talked to his daughter. She's learning Mandarin. So he was saying mm -hmm. all the kids learn Mandarin. Um, that's mm -hmm. one thing, which is fine. You're learning a foreign language. But what, you know, why uh, Mandarin? Because the Chinese mm -hmm. have made inroads there. Like, So the influence is from that side. Uh, because I, like I said, belief determines behavior. So, which Raji Malhotra mm -hmm. talks about. So, if you're learning a language, it comes with its own set of, you know, ideas and everything. The other side is the tuk tuk driver. No, the other, the car driver, not the tuk tuk driver. The, we took a car to Priya Vihir and he dropped us at the airport. And he was talking about how in India we ill treat women. He had mm -hmm. seen some videos. So, mm -hmm. the narrative is such that they do not think of this heritage as Hindu, the, the mm -hmm. normal person. They, they don't mm -hmm. know of it unless they have actually studied it. Uh, the tourists, of course, you know, they come for, you know, their, their um, mm -hmm. self shots and everything. Um, it was a French, uh, was it a French colony? The French were there, right? So it was, yeah. it was so a lot of French people have set up, uh, like I've also mentioned in the travel log, mm -hmm. they have set up cafes and stuff. So they are just doing it for commerce. So it's not up to them mm -hmm. to, you know, uh, talk about the Hindu uh, background that was there or the heritage. So now the, the, it is a very difficult job. Just as in India, it's a tough, mm -hmm. tough uh, uh, task uh, in Cambodia to, uh, to to change the narrative. So I remember we used to have these India festivals abroad when I was growing up. Um, so something like that on a regular basis. Because uh, in uh, Ta From, I think, uh, where this uh, movie was shot, there this, you know, it's a very famous shot of these aerial roots on a tree, uh, on a temple. It's, it's a very a photograph so that place you see that asi uh, is mm. working and you see that and you feel so proud that and you mm. see uh, signs in hindi and all that in devanagari so that is not enough because uh, and we're also not used to um, thumping our chest and saying yeah, this way mm. it is not mm. in our nature mm. but uh, maybe having festivities but the, i think the 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 monarchy and the kingdom is very uh, attuned to this yeah. and they would like you know like thailand and cambodia mm. all the east i mean we should look mm -hmm. east and we are now uh, with the current uh, dispensation. We are looking east uh, mm -hmm. in the past term onwards. We should do more than just looking east. Mm -hmm. We can have some kind of festivals. We can have exchange of you know cultural uh, programs and start off on, on a very mm -hmm. like, soft, uh, what is it called, soft diplomacy level. Mm -hmm. uh, engage on that level. And, and uh, there is ICCR, of course, but maybe have a bigger chunk of uh, mm -hmm. uh, kind of number of students coming to India and learning mm -hmm. more of exchange. Uh, mm -hmm. More books, for sure. Uh, not just a small anthology, which is amazing, and it's a, it's a great uh, breakthrough. But have a regular yeah. search. You know? Not just mm -hmm. anthology, but maybe books based on various aspects. A lot of researchers from India have worked on it. So maybe their books should be helped to publish and uh, to reach the public. So 
uh, we can do so many so many things from movies to games to anime to i mean there's so much to uh, probe yeah. into and and uh, create create you know you are also into films so would you uh, would you recommend like we did a uh, uh, a festival with k vishwanath garu's film where we called for people to create films on yes. his genre do you think it would work with uh, indo cambodia relations absolutely mm-hmm. i think it would if we give a theme and like how for anthology mm-hmm. you know and and mm-hmm. imagine you have so many i'm amazed mm-hmm. at the fiction writers because i feel for me i mean this is easier uh, mm-hmm. to just write what you do you know you go to a place and you write about it uh, to, to somebody like for example sri valli and hers is the first mm-hmm. story i'm mentioning her because she's probably the youngest and she used to be we discovered through this anthology my neighbor in in we used to oh. live in, 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 mm-hmm. right now also in sanipuri but sanipuri yeah in hyderabad where we were living before uh, we built our house uh, we used to mm-hmm. rent a place and she was our neighbor there in sanipuri mm-hmm. and she wrote back saying akka do you remember this 8 year old child and all that <laughs> <laughs> I was, oh my god and and she's such a wonderful writer to to uh, for indica to give a platform to such writers for their imagination and she's not been as far as i know to cambodia but she's imagined this whole world right so a film is uh, somebody else's medium hers mm-hmm. are words somebody else's medium is film and uh, uh, the visual medium will bring out a different kind of beauty and i'm all for people making films and it's very very democratic now so i mean anybody has a phone can make a film um, so definitely if if that is in the you know you're thinking about it uh, definitely haryana please <laughs> yes there should be something on that line yeah, yeah. so how, what what were the similarities that uh, you found in terms of uh, for your uh, mother for amma and uh, in with indian uh, culture and cuisine especially so we have a lot of issues when we travel to the west at least the uh, elder generation they have issues finding food uh, to eat so yes. how do how is it in cambodia so uh, the similarity first was on a very um, it's the high culture level because in terms of philosophy and uh, spirituality religion so you see that in the temple so she felt familiar you know there's shivalinga some are you know broken because of you know historical reasons so despite that you see a shivalinga you see a vishnu murti and you see flowers people offering incense and praying so that similarity is there you're not taken aback by a totally different culture so that similarity is there and in people's behavior like i said believes it deter- determine behavior uh, which rajiv mahotra ji talks about very eloquently is that you know people are when they see a senior person an older person they're very respectful uh, offering a seat or helping or uh, the tuk tuk driver was very, like i said he said you want to come home and so affectionate mm. so yeah. and then when there's rain he's pulling down the 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 tarp that they have on the side you know amma don't get wet and stuff like that so in terms of cuisine i must say we did have problem because uh, despite them being buddhist unlike what you would think that buddhists will be vegetarians um because of you know like jains are uh, but uh, southeast asia uh, the little that have traveled thailand and and cambodia etc they they are not and mm. uh, maybe in the monasteries it could be i don't know mm. but definitely uh, not and uh, there was uh, so it was a little uh, uh, difficult but mm-hmm. if you stay in a hotel and you request the the chef to make something because rice is there thankfully uh, you mm-hmm. know it's mm-hmm. headquarters of yeah. great rice different it's a sticky sticky rice southeast asia is all sticky mm-hmm. rice and so mm-hmm. we we really gorged on sticky rice and they also do sticky rice and mango sticky rice or some other mm-hmm. fruit um so purple rice uh, you know different kinds of rice and they have um i think a dish called amok a spice and a dish amok mm-hmm. uh, you know uh, they do that um so it is a bit sweet because they use coconut milk in everything mm. so kerala dishes will have that and we <laughs> like coconut i mean uh, telugu uh, and Tam- uh, tamil kannada people also use it but not as much as kerala like having coconut milk dishes yeah. right so that makes it a bit sweet and and as you know telugu mm. people eat very uh, hot spicy fiery uh, <laughs> yeah. so konjam kashtam was the the spicy bit but like mm. i said the mother was so full of passion and interest to just let's do this let's do this so it wasn't mm. that difficult but yes they have rice um and they have um, brinjal a plant so uh, mm. the problem was because we are vegetarian there was no pappu there's no lentils mm. Mm. there's tofu maybe but not that much as i would think like thailand you'd get mm. uh, tofu which will make up for your lack of protein mm. so uh, especially in siam rip i feel that uh, we do need 
uh, more in and not the generic indian restaurants but mm-hmm. proper you know uh, mm-hmm. uh, thali uh, bhojanam in mm-hmm. in uh, siam that's a good uh, business proposition if somebody is listening mm-hmm. and wants to start this mm-hmm. dirt for that they're all very fancy wonderful cafes and restaurants and fancy fancy stuff vegan this that and the other mm-hmm. nothing really desi like you said older people who want to eat mm-hmm. their own food there's one place that we went to i mentioned about it and and when she had that sambar she was so happy she's like okay finally <laughs> after 3 days she had some you know pappu mm-hmm. so it was a bit hard commonality was rice there is rice there are vegetables uh, there's a lot of you know you go on the streets there's a lot of insects there's a lot of other food that they have mm-hmm. so it was a bit tough i wouldn't say it was in common it was a bit tough but she's a very adventurous lady i must tell mm-hmm. you that i take after her so she's much more uh, adventurous yes. nothing for to observe <laughs> it would uh, to me, but uh, it doesn't for her she's like oh, this is their culture so <laughs> how sweet you you uh, studied uh, in the us and your book also uh, mentions here and there at uh, george washington university if i'm not yes. sure yes so there's a culture with indians in the us uh, at least you know if you see our relatives with especially with exercise and the things that they want to see boxes they want to take so is there in the us among indians and non indians is there a desire to explore the east like you did because we i we hear of people going to canada mexico those uh, you know maybe europe at the most my circle is not as much in my circles i did not uh, see an interest for the southeast uh, east of india uh, even in india i think we are more fascinated with the west and the west actually the immediate west is africa <laughs> so that <laughs> not even interested so much in africa right so unfortunately uh, travel for us would you know typically for people it's europe or uh, yeah. for for you know or even like south america because then machu picchu and all that boxes you mm-hmm. can take uh, in mm-hmm. my circles I, i have not seen people being interested in southeast asia although youngsters yes um, when they fly to uh, from india to us you know the cheap flights they go they take you via either hong kong or vietnam or something yeah. so there's a layover stop over then mm-hmm. they you know uh, explore and some of them have uh, interestingly even from india i've had friends and some indians in the us young young students who are studying in college doing their phd's they have been to vietnam and they mm-hmm. talk very highly of vietnam and uh, they say that oh it's beautiful people are wonderful um, but again of course if you're a vegetarian you'll have to think twice mm-hmm. you know maybe carry your rice cooker so food will be an issue if you're a vegetarian also there's a lot of seafood so if you're not used to that kind of fish and and the seafood and the smell so you have to uh, let go of certain mm-hmm. uh, if you come from a like a sheltered uh, background mm-hmm. you have to let go of certain kind of uh, your own indulgences and um, uh, give up those and then it'll be fine so i've heard a very a lot of things very high but when they go to vietnam uh, it is not in in the quest of uh, let's say the ancient hindu kingdom or something guess, like that yeah. ha it is it is mostly let's explore this beach yes. or yeah hmm. uh, that kind of but it's still okay i mean it's still adventure and so you know you go through all these searchings and travels and then you come into your own you know when you're young uh, when i was 21 or something Uh, mm-hmm. I did have interest in philosophy. That is true, uh, but yeah, I I didn't think of <laughs> traveling southeast. So uh, mm-hmm. let's hope to add books through Indica. Yeah, so films youngsters will be uh, enticed uh, to to explore yeah. our heritage. One last question to end this lovely interview. If uh, you know, just you're sitting down with your cup of tea someday, and you uh, think back on this uh, lovely journey with your mother. what would be the thing that uh, stands out most as a memory there are two things uh, our trip to kawalpin which is what enticed me to go in the first place uh, it is a forest it's in the middle of a forest and amma was for some reason you know the, the way we packed clothes you'll read that in the travel log right mm-hmm. because because she came from here i came from there and i didn't tell her mm-hmm. anything and i don't like to over prepare and over uh, research then i lose the surprise mm-hmm. element so we mm-hmm. land up in front of this forest and we don't know language the tuk tuk guy also doesn't speak much and this it's a forest you need a guide to go in but we just thought you know who wants a man to tell you what to do <laughs> we both will go in <laughs> we walked in and we were walking in silence because it's a dense forest mm-hmm. and there was nobody in sight and it was getting like it was a eerie and scary because you don't know there could be wild animals we don't know where we are going and all i know is kabalshpin is in the middle of this forest and i want to go see that and take darshan of that and then they have carved all these bhagwan uh, you know mm-hmm. murtis on on stones and underwater and all that mm-hmm. and all these thousand shivalingas 
under water and i just prayed to bhagwan i said uh, bhagwan because my mother kept you know she she's older and of course she's scared for me because mm-hmm. as a older person she feels she's responsible for me and i'm a, mm-hmm. a female and all that so i just said bhagwan i have come all this far i don't want to go back uh, without uh, seeing mm-hmm. you so please help I, i'll i'll take a sign like i told amma if we see somebody mama then we'll go ahead if we see somebody at anybody we see will go ahead mm-hmm. that means it's the right way because it was all chinna path like very rough thing it's not even a, a proper uh, like a tar road or something it's a, it's a literally like a uh, you know gully like matti ka gully in the, in mm-hmm. the jungle then if we don't see anybody i promise we'll go back but i didn't want to go back mm-hmm. and suddenly you know we see this uh, like a kapola like thing you know and shelter mm-hmm. four people it was literally shiva parvati and and the two children like oh, i was so happy and i cannot thank bhagwan enough uh, you know and not just that we saw them they took over us they took over our life in the sense they kept holding my mother's hand you know and looking after her all through the next 3 4 hours they were with us the second is going to priya vihir which is a temple complex on a very high uh, mountain Mm-hmm. dangra i think and it overlooks thailand and thailand and cambodia fought over this uh, for many mm-hmm. years and i had read about it in newspapers and i told mama we've come so far should we go and like i said i told you she said yes yes for everything mm-hmm. and we go there and this car is just driving north and there is nobody on the roads mm-hmm. we don't know the car driver the tuk tuk guy said he knows the car driver or something like that or the hotel people somebody sent it mm-hmm. we don't know we don't know the language middle of nowhere amma and me are just like going suddenly it's a vast expanse and it's just what if something happens right and then we go and then we get into another vehicle climb up and then suddenly we see like ahead of you is this valley of thai like we see thailand you know mm-hmm. the other side it's a big drop mm-hmm. and uh, yeah uh, i would think that those two memories are enough uh, for a lifetime <laughs> how <laughs> so. beautiful you've just brought it uh, in front of our eyes and all those who want to go now know what to look up Thank you so much, Kavita ji. It was such a, a pleasure, short but sweet. And I hope everyone who's watching picks the book up and uh, writes a review and experiences Cambodia through your words. Namaste ji. Thank you so much. Namaste. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.